heard the story uh, from Ray at um, the, the venture lab we have in uh, the University of Groningen, where uh, a lot of startups that are in Groningen, which is actually the second startup in a uh, uh, city in the Netherlands uh, compared to the rest. Um, and, I, and I heard this, uh, a very different approach than what I usually hear from uh, Dutch VCs. And uh, of course, I'm not going to do any spoilers, but uh, this is why I have invited Ray uh, to, to share what, what he's uh, working on and how they collaborate in, in, a, in an ecosystem they have uh, built as a venture capital uh, where um, yeah, the uh, uh, interest, interests can be combined. So uh, an applause for Ray Kitana from Cottonwood Ventures. Thank you very much. So how many people have heard of Cottonwood? Okay. Um, okay, here we go. So uh, just real quickly, the Cottonwood tree. It's the fastest growing, most prolific, most adaptive tree in North America. So uh, we think, we hope it's a good signature for who we are and what we try to do. We are a US-based early stage venture capital fund. Over the last seven years, we were actually the top early stage venture capital fund according to Prequin. So how many people in here are startups? Okay, so one of the things the Dutch are really bad at is telling everybody else how good they are, okay? <laughs> uh, Americans, we start off from the very beginning. We try to tell you, if we're the best in the world at something, we tell you that. So it sets the credibility and, and it, you know who you're talking to. So if you're talking to a VC, don't do a dance with them. Punch them in the nose. Tell them who you are, okay? I, I hate one of my pet peeves is getting to the third slide and still not knowing what the people do and who they are. So anyway, just sharing that with you. Um, so just to give you an idea, um, this is 800 funds. If you look at the, the orange line, that's the top quartile line. So for VC funds, elite funds are top quartile um, versus their peers. Um, our funds are at the top. The second one is actually off the slide, but unfortunately, I just left it there. Just to give you, again, it's, as we say in the Southwest, and that's where we're from, um, not our first rodeo, okay? Um, we are focused on what we call under-resourced areas. And what that means is everybody who's not the Valley, not New York or Boston, the rest of the world. Um, one of the things most people don't understand is um, nobody is the valley, okay? Everybody wants to be the next valley, Silicon Alley, forest, desert, I don't, it, they're not gonna be, okay? The, um, the valley did 30 billion in venture last year, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. The part that a lot of people don't understand is everything underneath that lifted those deals to a point where people could write the 50 million, 100 million dollar checks. And, the great thing about that, and, and something that I can share later, is that you don't have to be the valley. If you move your opportunities and deals to that point, the valley will come to you. And so um, our first investments here in the Netherlands, we immediately got calls from the valley asking, okay, what does the funding timeline look like? Uh, where are you guys going with this? Keep us in mind when you get to that point. So don't try to be the valley. Um, just to give you some perspective. So we're, we're in Twente, that's where we're based. Everybody asks us why we're way in Twente. So yeah, we, we're really confused when they say that. Um, we cover an area in the US, we cover the whole country. We're based in this, the Southwest states, and so the size and, and traveling around Europe is, is a different, uh, different paradigm for us. We think everything is super close. We don't understand that if we cross a line, we're in a different region in the same small country and they, they don't talk to each other and they speak a different language. So um, <laughs> we're all learning that. So what is it we do? We're venture capitalists. What is, what is that? So venture, the translation or, or the dictionary definition is a daring or risky journey. Now most VCs don't understand this. They want you to have a full team, they want you to have a full plan, they want you to have product, they want you to have customers. They basically want you to take away all the risk for them. And uh, that's not our approach. So um, our strategy, and uh, I'm a big proponent of strategy, I went to school to learn strategy, 
is uh, you have to have a strategic plan. We have a strategic plan. It's our investment thesis. It's how we approach investments. And that translates into any segment that we invest in. And when we talk to people, we expect them to have a vision and be able to work with us or already have a strategic plan that we can help them execute on and, uh, and, and change the, the global landscape. So we have three things that, that I look at that are most important to me when I first evaluate a, pr a project. First, is it relevant? Does it solve a large problem? Okay, I see a lot of cool, interesting ideas, work with national labs, Los Alamos, NREL. It, you'd be amazed at some of the things people come up with, okay? But the, the first question is, again, how impactful is it on a global scale? The second question, is it hard to imitate or duplicate? Okay, I don't want to get into a, it, I want to be able to sit across the table from the global 500 and, and sit eye to eye with them and tell them um, if they want to be a part of this deal, they're going to have to play with the focus on our company, not on them. We're not going to be pulled into the gravity of, of their interest. They get the advantage by having a seat at this table and being able to leverage to this technology or capability, but uh, they can't just say, oh, that looks good, Let, let's us do it. And uh, trust me, my friends at Google, um, I shouldn't really mention any names, um, they tell us the first thing that they do if they like something is they try to see if they can duplicate it themselves. And if they can't, then you get that second talk. And uh, so anyway, um, and you wouldn't want to get, uh, I, I won't say anything, anyway. <laughs> Third, can we add value? What do we bring to the table? So one of the things we bring is a unique global ecosystem. So we've co-invested with 30 of the global 500 in the last five years. We have four um, as LPs. We have done deals with another 60. Um, we share deal flow with a large number of other ones. So. Um, one thing we have is a lot of technical market intelligence that we can leverage. We have the capabilities to come in at the top of these companies and get exposure and uh, visibility and mind share from the top so that when we go to the potentially the right business unit, it, 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 things move a lot quicker and you get a lot more positive response if, if it comes from the top down. If it comes from the bottom up, you have to use somebody's... Um, uh, political capital and, and have someone champion you to push it up, that takes a long time. So that's one of the things we're able to do, accelerate that whole process. So um, again, there's, there's three um, major components that you know everybody hears. You gotta have a great team, you gotta have a good idea, and you gotta have smart money. So um, the secret is, and, and I'll tell you the secret here that we found, because we started in regions where there wasn't a large ecosystem, is that um, in truth, you only have to have two of these things to be really successful. Because if you have two, you can always attract the third. So if you have smart people and money, you can find good ideas. If you have good ideas and good people, you can get money. If you have good ideas and money, you can get people, okay? So we have, a full resource platform. We've actually licensed technologies from the university, brought in a team, helped them with a strategic plan, brought in development partners, brought in distribution partners, brought in customers, and funded the deal. So we can help move companies from uh, ideation all the way to past the valley of death and, and to scaling. So we've done deals where somebody with a pitch deck said, I think we can do this, it's never been done, people tried for 20 years, we need two million. That's normally not a VC deal. Um, so uh, we're just looking for the best ideas. We don't care what industry, what technology. And uh, the great thing about this is, so uh, if you only need two, we already have smart money, we have the ecosystem. So all we need is you. And, and that's the, the key limited resource. And when you're talking to VCs, even my friends here, <laughs> remind them that you guys are the critical element. We're in the services business. Our job is to position you guys to succeed because when you guys succeed, we succeed. So how does this translate to blockchain? 
Well, there's tons of segments, tons of, of areas in the stack, tons of VC-backed deals. Everything that I, I just explained in terms of our investment thesis translates directly into blockchain. So these are also kind of the network of the corporates also investing. So there's plenty of connectivity all through the corporates and the venture group, the venture space, investing in this space because the opportunity is huge. Everybody agrees with that. So the question is, who's going to win? Who has the right capabilities? And uh, how is the market going to develop? The, the, most, the biggest question is time. When is the time, the timing of the market? So um, what am I looking for in the space? So same thing my friends are looking for. All we want is an unfair advantage, OK? We want you guys to come with something that changes the dynamic of the marketplace. Um, so I have a, a few suggestions for you guys. So if you can build me a better cryptocurrency with scaling, privacy, immediacy, um, the, the ability to uh, protect against theft, loss, or fraud, I would love that. Come talk to me. Okay, if you have better smart contracts than Ethereum, and, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later. So ag again, these are basically opportunity spaces. These are things that people are working on right now. Um, I know companies right now that are moving, you, you know, to Bitcoin 2.0, doing blockchain 3.0. So this is where, the, you know, the next generation technologies are. Um, identity. Give me a better. Identity coin than Civic, um, better scalability than Ripple. Although I have to admit, of all the coins I've seen and, and the technologies, Ripple is one of the most impressive. Um, better privacy, Zcash. Better governance, Tessas. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you know what I mean, though. <laughs> There's a reason why they raised all that money, okay? So, uh, um, uh, better instant transactions, uh, a, a better platform than Kin or uh, Unicorn. Uh, again, all of them are tokenizing these different spaces. And if you guys are able to provide value and, and build upon what they're doing or do something better, architecture that smooth and changes all of this, then that's exciting. And that's also what's needed in the market. Huge problem. Technical problem, the sharding problem. Does everybody know what that is? If you don't know, you need to ask somebody. If you solve that, come talk to me. Let's, let's do something, okay? Huge issue. Okay, so any one of those areas, th there's tremendous potential. And right now, it's these technology capabilities that are, are really holding back th the entire ecosystem. Um, everybody talks about regulation and governance. If you were at the last um, legal deep dive, you heard me ask them, you know, what are they going to do when the technology uh, moves to the next level? Because they, don't, they aren't in the loop. Um, the distributed ledgers and economies are out of their hold unless they're able to, to manage the goods on site. Um, and uh, so this is when the world is really going to change, when these problems are solved. Now, here's three other main issues that if you guys can, can find a means to enhance or fix would create tremendous value. This is kind of dirty little secrets of blockchain that aren't secrets, OK? So the first, energy consumption. So right now, Bitcoin is causing more energy consumption than Paraguay as a country. Huge cost. If you translate it to uh, a Bitcoin transaction right now, it uses the same amount of energy as your house does in a week. That's, that can't be sustained. The, the, the technology, the, the ecosystem, the economy cannot continue on that place, on that pace. Um, Every hour, the, uh, one of the, the mining centers operates, it creates a CO2 equivalent of 200,000 car kilometers 
traveled. So the impact on the environment is, is, is way too much burden. We need to solve these. Another one, I told you about the smart contracts. So it costs too much. If you add two numbers a million times on Ethereum, it costs you $20. If you did the same execution on uh, Amazon web servers, it would take you, it would cost you 0 0.0000007 cents. So that's nine orders of magnitude. So on one hand, if I tell you this service is going to cost you 10 million euro. And the other hand, I tell you, this one's going to cost you less than one euro. <laughs> Where are you going? Okay? You're not going here. So those costs need to come down. <sighs> the last one, and this is one that, that is really tough. So uh, what do you, who knows what Jijo means? That's it. Garbage in, garbage out. So... Blockchain has a first mile problem. Um, we talk about authentication and you know, being able to be transparent and drive uh, all the information of the entire supply chains or logistics chains or ecosystems, but the majority of authentication happens at mile two. So we need someone to figure out how to extend that authentication out to the first mile so that the people that are really creating the value here have transparency and really are able to participate in the value they're creating. So the aggregators at the next step who are saying, okay, this is fair trade, this is what the cost was, there were no pesticides used, uh, we just have to believe those guys. And they are determining what the people at the first mile are earning. So if we're able to solve this first mile problem, again, it will change the economics and social impact at the bottom of the pyramid tremendously, and that will change the world. And there's two things that really excite me about the blockchain, and it's the first mile and the last mile. So if we can change at this end and create economies at the bottom of the pyramid, at the same time, at the other end, allow me to digitally pay for everything and, and do transactions without, cross across, without costs across borders or small costs, then that's an amazing world. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to that happening. And of course, that can't happen without you guys. Did I mention that? Okay. So again, this is what we do. This is our approach to investing. And we're uh, happy and eager to speak with anyone who thinks that we might be a good fit for them and, and our vision and how we work resonates with you. Thank you.